Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to appear here to uh, testify on the climate warming issue. Uh, I work for uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration of uh, Department of Commerce myself. Uh, the, um, uh, one of the most powerful tools for the study of climate problem is uh, mathematical climate models. And this mathematical climate model uh, consists of a system of equations which represent the um, uh, behavior of atmosphere and oceans. Now, atmosphere component of such a model is very similar to the one uh, which is used for weather forecasting, daily weather forecasting, uh, U.S. National Weather Service, and many other National Weather Service of many other nations. And so what you hear about as a computer guidance is the one you get that thing out of this uh, atmospheric uh, computer models. Now, we have known uh, this kind of model, which uses as present supercomputer, uh, can reproduce the major, uh, mimic the uh, behavior of the atmospheric circulation, and can simulate the uh, geographical and seasonal variation of climate very well. Also, these models seem to be able to simulate past climate, such as last glacial maximum. So encouraged by these success, uh, we have used this model for wide variety of climate problem, including the problem of greenhouse gases and climate warming connection problem. Now, uh, the recently uh, already uh, discussed uh, quite a few previous speakers. The international conference uh, was organized jointly by United Nations Educational Program and World Meteorological Organization and International Council of Scientific Unions, assembling these experts, discuss the uh, climatic change due to greenhouse increase and its associated impact. The, I was one of the uh, participants of this meeting. The executive summary of conference report concludes that if present trend continue, the combined concentration of carbon dioxide and other trace gases in the atmosphere would be radiatively equivalent to doubling of carbon dioxide from pre-industrial value, possibly as early as year 2030. What this means that CO2 equivalent of greenhouse gases will double from pre-industrial value somewhere maybe 40, 50 years from now. Uh, this is discussed earlier by Dr. Ciceron, and based upon the result from most advanced climate model, the report states that the climate warming due to the doubling of these greenhouse equivalent CO2 equivalent gases will be something like 3 to 2.5 to 8 degrees, confirming, con concurring area statement made by U.S. National Academy of Science. The report cautioned, however, that the value outside this range cannot be excluded between the present imperfection of the models. And the warming will be further delayed by several decades by the thermal inertia of oceans. Nevertheless, it is highly likely from these estimates that the warming of something like two to eight degree Fahrenheit will be reached in the second half of next centuries. And the report noted that a climate change of that kind would have far-reaching impact on human life and planet ecosystem. At the Geophysical Free Dynamics of NOAA, uh, I have been working on this problem uh, past 25 years. You wonder how long you spend, how come you spend so long on this problem? It's very a, a painstaking, long-term process to improve these mathematical models. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, one of the results from uh, uh, obtained from these climate model, obtained from our, at our laboratory and other institutions. This climate change is not very uniform. It's far from uniform geographically. It has a uh, particularly large warming uh, in high latitude during winter. 
making a uh, uh, severe winter less severe in uh, Canada and the Soviet Union in winter. The other consequence may be, uh, which model indicate, is a reduction of sea ice coverage over Arctic Ocean and circumtactic oceans. This is another consequence which model indicate. In the tropics, warming would be smaller. But you know, when well, tropics is already hot enough, so I don't know whether that is implies any consolation to us. Uh, the, um, the other indication of climate model is that the, the atmosphere in the warm and CO2-rich world, air can contain much more moisture in there so that warm, moisture-rich air can penetrate into high latitude and then drop precipitate there. So that this increase a very substantial is runoff, annual mean river runoff over northern Canada and northern Siberia. And this probably have very interesting implications. Other result of climate model is a reduction of soil moisture over extensive regions of mid-continental region over North America and the uh, uh, Eurasian continent. For example, over Great Plains, uh, the, uh, this kind of uh, soil moisture reduction is characterized by dry soil, uh, reduced cloud cover, and hot air temperature, uh, which resembled the dust bowl period, situation in dust bowl period in 1930s, when northern hemisphere average mean temperature was significantly above normal values. And that uh, yeah, pictures, uh, this uh, yeah, reddish, uh, brownish red area indicates the area where soil moisture reduces more than 20 percent. Yeah. And uh, 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 you can see uh, the, actually the present, still limitation of present model. You shouldn't take literally every small wiggle in this thing because computational resolution model is very costly. But what does seem to indicate is that major area of mid-continental area over USA and Western Europe and large area over, U uh, over the uh, Eurasian continent, soil moisture reduces. Why? The, one of the important mechanisms is when climate gets warmer, as you already know, in spring in the Midwest, it's flooded with rivers, uh, the flow. It's very wet in spring. And then after snow melt season end, the sunshine increases, snow doesn't deflect sunshine anymore, so it's much more radiation energy, more evaporation. So soil dries from spring towards summer. Now, in the warm climate, when snow melt season come earlier, what does it happen? Then uh, earlier ending, termination of snow melt season, uh, make it so that spring to summer drying of soil moisture commence earlier making summer drier. The other mechanism is that it involves a little bit to explain it, but uh, the, uh, I forget the Hey, you need yeah. to use the microphone yeah. if you want the, to be on C-SPAN. Yeah. Other effect is that, <laughs> sorry about that. The other effect is that they are also spring rainy period in the area, which again makes this summer drying, begins the area so that makes summer soil dry. So these are rather robust phenomena which may not de depend upon the detail of the kind of warming. Uh, of course, uh, there is major uncertainty remains as pointed out by earlier speakers in the estimate of climate change due to the increase of greenhouse effect. Uh, for example, it is difficult to determine with confidence the delay in climatic response due to the summer inertia of the ocean. How much climate will delay by oceanic summer inertia? And this is because development of ocean model, we don't use ocean model for ocean weather predictions. So meteorologists have the advantage. The development of ocean model is still early stage of development. The another thing, uh, basic reason why we have to say 2.5 to 8 degree Fahrenheit seems to be very wide range. Depending upon which one you believe, uh, this assessment of this effect is quite different. 
uh, is because of our ignorance, uh, our inability to model cloud cover, interaction between cloud cover and radiation. And you can see how difficult it is to put the cloud cover in mathematical models, such a nebulous problem here. And so these uh, cloud cover and ocean uh, the topics which is chosen by World Climate Research Program as two of most important research topics uh, uh, for the studying uh, next decade or so. You get me very interested when, when I, I see the possibility that in the Red River of the North and the yes. Lake Agassiz Basin, the 35-mile radius in the wheat heart of North Dakota and Minnesota, that we might not have floods. But then it bothers me that we might have more than yeah. five tons per acre of soil blowing from one state to the other because That's it gets drier and yeah. drier and we, yeah. now, we lose the wheat, have to... wheat basket uh, both in our country and we lose it in Central Europe and we lose it in the Soviet Union. Yeah. Now, one thing, however, you have to remember is that it gets wetter in winter. Wetter in winter? Winter. In our model. Model indicates it's getting wetter in winter. So this is something to consider in connection with water management in middle latitude. Uh, now, after listening to my presentation, you may wonder why, whether climate may have already changed due to the past increase in greenhouse gases. This is a natural question you would ask. Uh, the BRAC conference report noted that global mean temperature has increased by about three to seven tenths of degree centigrade, which is about 0.5 to 1.3 degree Fahrenheit during the last 100 years. Now, this is consistent, not inconsistent with the expected warming from the result of modern calculations. But BRAC conference could not prove that this is due to greenhouse warming because we don't know, as pointed out by earlier speaker, exactly how much was the solar constant was really constant or the, uh, how the stratospheric loading of aerosol have changed during the last 100 years. And these information are so inaccurate that we can't prove scientific rigorous manner that perfect past warming is attributable to greenhouse warming yet. Now, to detect future change of climate due to greenhouse gases, it is imperative that we monitor the basic variable describing climate, as well as factors that can cause its change. These measurements will require sustained and serious commitment on the part of this country. In addition, real progress will require increased level of international scientific cooperation in monitoring and monitoring of climate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh...